I can't believe how much you turned me on Just to be your man That's what's done, is it? <laughs> <laughs> this is the real life story of how this anarchic Belfast trio became the unlikely figureheads of a civil rights movement to save their mother tongue. All right? Yeah. So he's, that, o- he's oversold that. That's a lot of pressure. He oversold that. <laughs> Look, I mean, all, all of us, this is a, a new experience. We're, we're kind of just riding on the wave here. And, you know, it, it's obviously super exciting to be at Sundance, you know, and, and then to sort of be out the gate with, you know, selling the film to a company like Sony Pictures Classic, who's some of my favorite films are Sony Pictures Classic films, which, which came out of Sundance. So, you know, we're in some really esteemed company. And, and look, He says that about all the film companies. <laughs> So, look, we're just excited to get, you know, the, the next phase of things, you know what I mean? Like, promoting the film, getting out there, getting it in front of audiences, right? We, you know, it's been so, it's been so fun just doing a couple of screenings, but thinking about that in cinemas all across America, all across the world, it, it's just, um, you know, we're buzzing. I think it's kind of similar to when we started doing, doing the music and doing uh, hip-hop and Irish. We never had any high hopes of uh, or ex- expectations when we were starting this music because, obviously, as he said, not many people speak Irish. So we were thinking maybe um, if we use a language that not many people understand, that we are, um, what is it? Snookering ourselves. Snookering ourselves, and there's uh, less people who understand us. But again, with this movie, um, language is not a barrier, thankfully. And we're here in Sundance with a film that's in Irish, and there's people laughing at the jokes, and they're, they don't care that the don't understand what we're saying and I think that's very uh, that's very heartwarming heartwarming for us I think people always say that like as he just to touch on what he's saying about the fact that there's not many people that speak Irish I think people always sort of thought it was going to be an obstacle for us and it was going to close doors when in actual fact it has opened way more doors than if we were doing it in English and like just to make the point as well we didn't make a conscious decision to do it in Irish we speak Irish it's how we live day to day and once we started a, a group, it, it was just, it wasn't a conversation. It was just naturally an Irish, it's our language, obviously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're very proud that we get to represent this new wave of young people in Ireland, especially in the city where we are in Belfast, who speak Irish proudly. And we speak English quite well, also. But, uh, <laughs> for a second language, it's not bad. Language, I'm, get, I'm getting used to it. I'm yeah, you, you wouldn't think, you know, this is, it's, it's, it's weird, isn't it? It's niche as second language is English, yeah. right? And then it's like, you know, it, it, that, that that's that's I'm very good at it. Forget. He's, he's pretty good at it. I'm very he's, good he's, at he's it. like he's, he can do his spellings and he can do um he can hold he can, a conversation he, like for a play game. Conversation and how you uh, say uh, joined very up letters. good to be here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, joined up letters and everything. He knows big words. Yeah, and I, I think it kind of takes away the idea that monolingualism is the only way that we only have to speak English. I think uh, by, like, we, we can all speak multiple languages like the way it is in Europe and other countries in Africa. Mm. And I think this is a way forward for people to embrace their identity and their culture and their language and to reconnect with something that maybe doesn't have much financial value, but maybe has some more internal <laughs> core values that makes you really happy. Lovely. And we also, we also, you know, as much as it's about the Irish language, we're really keen to put, you know, to make the point that there's indigenous languages all around the world that are dying. One dies every 40 days, right, which is a mad statistic, right? But, you know, that they are, once an indigenous language dies, it's gone forever. And with it goes a culture and a history and a, a part of humanity, right? And so we hope this film inspires people to look around where they are and say, what language was my grandparents speaking? If I, you know, and make the effort to maybe learn that and and you know whether you're from ireland or wherever wherever in the world and i think that yeah that that would be a great thing that come out of this uh, english is a very new thing in ireland by the way sorry to ramble on over the top there we're only speaking english in ireland for 150 years and we spoke irish for over 2000 is it before um, jesus was born so it's a very new concept so we're just getting the hang of it now jesus spoke irish did you know that i used to bump marbles with him <laughs> No, I mean, I, I didn't sort of set out to make a, a, a sort of the sort of film we ended up making at all. Like, um, you know, it was it was serendipitous. I went to a gig. I met a band that I, I loved and I, I loved, fell in love with their music and then met them and fell in love with them. Uh, and, uh, you know, and, and thought, you know what, you know, to make a film is a labor of love. An independent film is a labor of love. Right. And you've got to have, like you know, just complete obsessive passion about telling that story. And. I knew these boys were special, right? And I knew that, you know, I wanted to... They were, <laughs> they, I knew there was... And I was like, you know what? 
you know, I can I can spend, I can wake up, I can go to bed every night thinking kneecap, and I can wake up every morning thinking kneecap, right? And that's what you have to do to, to you know, that's to get it here. And and um, you know, you went to bed all, all night thinking about us. I, I went to bed all night. Last thing I thought about every night was was you. And uh, touched. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> My, look, Michael um, read the script. You know, that, look, we were looking for um, for actors who maybe had some understanding of Irish would be handy, given the role was was Irish speaking, and, and Michael had that. Michael was top of our list because Michael had played Bobby Sands in, um, you know, for for us was you know a film that in Belfast is revered, and he's revered for for you know Bobby is an idol, right? He, he's a hero, he's a martyr, and um, you know he's got a special place in the, the heart of the people of the North. And so, you know, Michael was obviously the person that we really wanted to be in this film. And we, and he read the script and very quickly came on board and, you know, I'll let the boys talk about, you know, what it was like to work with him and, and be on screen with him. Yeah. Uh, we met Michael Fassbender and um, we had a big sing song with him one night. We were sitting down and after all the filming and uh, I was drinking creme de menthe all day. It's like a green drink and my stomach turned. So I went to the toilet to throw up and, I look up from the cubicle and it's Michael standing over the top of me going, it happens to me sometimes as well. So it was a very surreal moment for me. <laughs> it was quite hard. I mean, initially we did a lot of acting classes, of course, because acting is a skill you have to acquire. So for six months we were getting together every week and doing classes. And we were doing like different exercises, like staring into each other's eyes. It was horrible. Minutes. It was horrible. It's quite a hard. We do. We are best friends, but I never really stare into my best friend's eyes for more than five minutes. I've lived. Now we're a throuple. I've lived with him for eight years. Like, but like, you don't look into somebody's eyes for longer than five or six seconds, you know. And having to do it for a minute was very challenging. Very arousing. That's why he wears sunglasses now, is because he doesn't want anyone That's to stare into his eyes. Fucking hungover. That's why. Yeah, that is. We're in love. <sighs> it's like a wee safety net for my face. <laughs> Yeah, I think yeah, it definitely gave us a lot of confidence. It was still obviously very nerve wracking acting alongside Michael Fassbender and Simone Kirby and and uh, Jessica and other Fanula people who have acted in actual movies. And I think the whole uh, crew was very nervous on the first day because they were saying, um, "I don't know if these boys can actually act." But credit the rich that he put a lot of faith in us, and we uh, soothed their anxieties after the first few days. And uh, we now are at Sundance. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, 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 obviously the, the, the obvious way to go about a band is to make a documentary about a band. But where they were in their careers, it would kind of be odd to, to kind of before they were even signed or anything like that to start to make a documentary, a sort of feature length documentary about it. Would have been a great documentary. Huh? Would have been a great it documentary. It would have been a great documentary, but it probably been hard to get off the ground. Now, I'm the Kneecap documentary will be coming at some point and it's going to be epic. Coming right? to a cinema near you. Yeah, it will be epic. Okay, and uh, you know that they've had a uh, there's a dear friend of ours, um, Padero Gill, who is their videographer, um, who who's followed them since day one with his camera, and and you know and you know a great inspiration for the film was going through those rushes for me. Do you know what I mean? And pa uh, Pado was very generous in opening that up and going look, making that at my disposal to go through to to see them emerging and growing, and and that was a great inspiration for things. Um, and yeah, so then then you know when we. Um, started writing the script I just felt it was a real challenge and, I, and I'm drawn to things that's like it's a thorny thing how do you do something where people are playing them versions of themselves I don't, I don't, had I seen it before I was like oh, not really I mean maybe the monkeys did a the Beatles did a film but it was like yeah, it feels quite unique and I thought well, hang on if it's unique then perhaps if we could pull it off We've got something special, right? And I think it's a bit, it took a long time. It did take a long time to get the tone right. And I think that was the key thing. Once we found the right tone of how to pull it off, I think everything fell behind that. But I always think the tone is an under, kind of sometimes um, underestimated element in, in film. That's, it's not necessarily on the page, but it's a feeling. And, and once we found that feeling in, in, mm -hmm. in the project that we all felt was a true representation of them, because mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? It, it, that yeah. fit, this film is them. Right and and um, yeah, we it, it's true to them, and I think that we kind of feel we've come out of it with you know them being themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think a great a great thing that's in our movie is the power of language and how important language is when it comes to power structures. And you can see during the film how some characters refuse to speak Irish to some characters, and some refuse to speak English, and it's just back and forth dynamic 
going there. And I think it's, it's, I haven't seen that in any, any films before. And that's important because language is a very empowering thing, especially where we are in the North of Ireland and reclaiming your language. So I think that's a very strong theme in the movie. Credit to Rich for doing that there and getting that across the line. Uh, so I think, um, yeah, it's a very unique and a very original film. Yeah.